Hello, uh, Ulf Magnusson from uh, Buildings Line of Business here with you. And today I want to talk about uh, new features in Ecostructure Building Operation 3.2 that are designed to help uh, customers in the pharmaceutical manufacturing business and the life science industry to uh, comply with the current regulations and guidelines. Some of the features that I'm going to talk about requires additional licensing. Please refer to release documentation uh, for, uh, for details. First, a feature related to traceability and authenticity of, uh, of operators. And uh, the feature is uh, called change control in uh, building operation. Objects in building operation can be configured uh, using a right-click command, right-click menu, uh, uh, like this. Under advanced here, we have a new section called change control. So objects can uh, require single signature or dual signature, or you can disable the function. Single signature means that one user need to authenticate and specify a comment like a reason for uh, for change and a dual signature require two different individuals to authenticate and specify a comment for the change uh, to happen you can uh, configure the objects as you as you need i have two objects in my uh, uh, current database that are configured to require change control. It's this digital schedule. You can see that on this little icon that uh, it has change control enabled. I also have another uh, set point here uh, that also have change control uh, enabled. So you can pre-configure this uh, in advance and not until a master switch is uh, is flicked. Does this come into effect? So you can, during the programming and uh, commissioning phase, have this uh, all prepared. And then when you get closer to handover, uh, then you can flick the master switch for this functionality. The master switch is uh, located um, here in the system tree. It's called change control. So this is currently disabled. If I enable that, I get the little license uh, violation um, because it requires a license, but I can still demonstrate it. So when I go to my digital schedule that required, let's check again, change control single signature. Then when I make a change to this, either from workstation or from uh, web station, go to that same schedule. Let's see where my, where my schedule is. Here, and I make a change. Then I get the dialogue that pops up where I specify my uh, username and password and a comment. Changed. Uh, for uh, XYZ reason. And not until this is authenticated uh, and logged does the change actually happen. Same thing for the humidity set point. In my case, I think I had that configured for dual signature. So if I attempt to make changes to this, um, I'll get a similar dialogue in workstation that asks the user for comment, um, uh, changed for uh, control tuning uh, reasons and my admin my password and I sign it then because this had dual signature enabled uh, a second individual different individual need to also sign 
approved and see if I remember what the password was. Successful. And I went, when I hit OK, the change uh, will, uh, will happen. So all these uh, signings, um, including the comments, is logged in the audit trail. If I go and view my uh, event log, I can see that uh, the change event has happened and the signings have also uh, uh, happened. I can see that it is object change event or signings that uh, are part of a change control sequence by this, uh, this uh, icon here. And if I want to see both the object change event and the signings, I can use a right click menu. We have now a find related events command that will show the uh, the property change event and the signings, the one I did, admin, and the one Bob did. My, my manager who needed to approve that change. We have also uh, a couple of new, uh, new columns in the event log. Uh, one is uh, contains signature information. We have the actual signatures as well, signature and comment. And we have something called operation ID. I'll add those to my, uh, to my event view here. So the signature field contains the full printed name uh, of, uh, of the user. So first name, name and last name need to be configured for users who are uh, supposed to be uh, supposed to be signing. We also have the signature comment as part of the uh, uh, part of the event log, and we have the operation ID. I'll move it up here so you can see it. The operation ID is a unique identifier for this particular workflow. It uniquely identifies and links the signing actions with the property change. Um, event. So this, uh, um, because in, in larger systems you might have several changes going on at the same time and this uniquely identify this, uh, this particular chain of uh, events and links them together. They all have their individual timestamps, of course, and logs exactly when, uh, when that, uh, that happened. It's possible to control who have the authority to perform signings, and that's done through uh, our uh, user account group policies. Let's see, in my, in my domain, I have a group that I have named are allowed to sign and in the policies here there's a new new policy change control so members of this group are allowed to uh, to perform the signing operation so you can differentiate that Change control is a licensed feature, but here's a couple of new features in 3.2 that uh, are um, probably interesting for, for, for many customers, but particularly for this, uh, uh, this uh, user group. And that's the possibility to specify an IP range or a list. Uh, it can be a, a list of ranges as well. Uh, for which when the client accesses from an IP uh, IP address in that, uh, in that list, this group becomes effective. So now you can differentiate permissions based on where 
the user is logging on from. So you can, for instance, differentiate permissions based on location. So if the user is logging in from remote or from home, uh, uh, the user get less permissions. And when the user is on site, the permissions are elevated. You can also connect this group to a schedule. So when uh, 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 you, so you can use time schedules to define when this this uh, group's permission should be uh, should be valid for uh, for the user. So working hours, for instance, higher privileges, particularly if they log on from local, maybe these can be used in combination uh, uh, as well. So some unique features in three point two that uh, uh, may be particularly interesting for uh, pharmaceutical customers. Uh, so for uh, for change control, um, any changes of that configuration is also logged in the event log, of course, together with uh, with all other all, all uh, uh, other changes. Um, I went by a little quick. I should mention uh, mention also, but that in this change control where we had the master switch for the functionality it's always the case that if you turn this off again the change control then you will always be uh, be required to specify two signatures so that's kind of hard coded running off uh, change change control and uh, that's me. And I signed the change, and then my my boss Bob um, uh, approves. All logged in the audit trail, of course. Some other settings here. We can now generate alarms at uh, failed logon attempts or uh, signing attempts. So I've set this to two here. Uh, this is um, a requirement from uh, from pharmaceutical industry and others that you um, uh, need to be able to notify security departments. So now you can use the built-in alarm management of billing operation to. Uh, 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 to send to security departments when failed attempts uh, uh, happen. Uh, and also here's a setting for, uh, uh, for number of signatures required to manage user accounts. So here's a kind of master switch for that. So all uh, password resets, for instance, or edits of user, uh, user accounts need two signatures. Uh, which is uh, a requirement from, for instance, the United States Food and Drug Administration for uh, for user management. Uh, so that's the change control uh, features. Change control is part of uh, uh, is a licensed feature, part of the compliance pack uh, bundle. Uh, the IP range and schedule permission differentiation is uh, available for all uh, outside of this uh, this license. Next section, I uh, want next um, uh, area of functionality I wanted to talk about is um, related to reporting that may be of interest for for many, not only in the life science industry, but we've we've done some uh, specific functionality for uh, for these customers. Um, we've had um, uh, both from this industry, but also from other uh, 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 for uh, uh, requirements for uh, uh, for the reporting uh, 
in uh, in building operation. We've had the report server uh, since uh, since a long time uh, with uh, with its limitations and uh, difficulties. Uh, we have um, in three point zero we introduced the time scale connectivity, the extended log storage functionality. Uh, that you actually, uh, by the way, also get the license for when you uh, buy the compliance pack, because uh, because many customers in this uh, segment are required to save data for a long time, so we include the timescale uh, license in that in that bundle. Uh, and with the timescale functionality, you get data out to an external database that you can report on, but but in 3.2, we've made some improvements to what you can do with only building operations. So without using uh, uh, using any external software, any additional installs, uh, we have some uh, some built-in uh, functionality for reporting, and that's imp that's important for these customers as well because we we limit the we 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 limit the data transport problems and the vulnerabilities that might happen in the in the transport of data and we extend the type of data that you can report on as well so by building in the report functionality we uh, uh, we um, uh, get rid of those uh, limitations so in in building operation 3.2, I'll show you a few examples of what what can be done. We're not. Uh, I I will not go through all the aspects of um, of uh, reporting uh, uh, functionality um, because uh, it's for um, it's for experienced uh, engineers, but I'll focus on a, f on a on a few aspects, few features that are especially interesting for uh, uh, for the pharmaceutical industry. Maybe I'll do another video for uh, for the uh, reporting core functionality, but I'll show some of it. Th these are some examples of reports that you can now can now generate from building operation servers. All the building operation servers, both enterprise central, enterprise server, and even standalone uh, SmartX Edge servers can generate reports like this now, built in without using any external software, without any dependencies of uh, uh, external software or having to install any additional um, additional software. I mentioned that the events for each action in a in a sequence of a single or dual uh, signature um, is is unique and time stamped. We have specific functionality in in uh, the reporting to include those related events in uh, audit trail reports. So this is an example of a report that can be generated now. This this is uh, uh, filtered on uh, on Bob, so it's showing Bob's activity in the system. But I have I have specified for this report that I also want to include related uh, related information. So it is the server is automatically. Uh, detecting that the, that the event, the property change event, or this this in this case the signing that Bob has has done, is part of a change control chain of events, and it's also then including the property change event that Bob approved, and the signing that that I did as a user as well. That specifies the motive, motivation for uh, uh, for the change. So to get both both Bob's own activity, but also related important activity, to be able to uh, to review this audit trail properly is uh, is included here. And in 
in building operation. I said I wasn't going to go too deep, but uh, in the user activity report, I um, I specify the the event. The events is the data source, and in here in the definition of the events that I want to include, I have specified that I also want to include related events. So checking this box will be important for uh, uh, for the customers in the pharmaceutical segment. Our new um, functionality uh, in reports is kind of based around uh, Excel or actually more specifically the XLSX open uh, uh, spreadsheet format. Um, Microsoft Excel is, is only one of the editors. There, there are others, but uh, Excel is probably the most popular. You create your templates in Excel and upload them. I can, I can show you this user activity report, for instance. Uh, I have up uploaded the uh, the spreadsheet to the server, and it looks like looks like this. So here I've created my spreadsheet with some uh, some headers and I've some footers for uh, uh, date and time and page number. Uh, some, some logos, and then I've specified that I want my events in a table like that, where I have, uh, uh, you know, I'm using a kind of an Excel type, uh, XML type of, uh, of language to specify that I want the timestamp here, the username here, the uh, address of the object here, what action was performed, old value, new value, and you can pick any any of the columns in the event view and put them in the correct cells like this. This is a user activity report for the ph pharmaceutical uh, business. So I've, I've also included the signature information, the operation ID so that I can make that link between the various actions and the signature comment in here. So uh, for each event that uh, the system um, detects is part of a chain of events like that. It'll, it'll include this information as well. Then I upload uh, upload this to uh, to the server, and when the when the report is generated, you can gen you can uh, you can generate it on uh, on alarm or uh, on uh, schedule or any other custom uh, custom condition. You can generate this. Um, uh, this report, uh, the server will parse the XLS file, as XLSX file, and insert the data from building operation in there, uh, and then generate a new copy of uh, of uh, of the spreadsheet that you can then uh, that you can then uh, distribute. Uh, using the distribution mechanisms we have, uh, we have uh, write to file. It it writes to uh, the the file to disk, or you can get the report in uh, in an attachment to an email, for instance. Excel is uh, is great. You can uh, uh, the recipient can just uh, open it and um, and review the result and edit for many customers that's really convenient but but for customers in the pharmaceutical manufacturing that can be a major problem so we have uh, built functionality to ha to handle that problem as well in the distribution uh, method settings here you can you can get your reports also converted to pdf this functionality is available uh, to all. Uh, the, uh, you don't need uh, the compliance pack uh, license uh, for it. You can get this conversion to PDF um, uh, without an, uh, an extra license. And um, PDF is a much more popular format uh, for customers who, who, who 
don't want uh, the output to be editable by ordinary means, uh, it's quite uh, um, much more difficult to edit PDFs than to edit uh, edit spreadsheets. And to uh, to protect against uh, editing is important for these customers because the 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 report content uh, uh, must not be able to be uh, easily edited and falsified uh, because that uh, may include um, uh, data that is uh, important for the quality of uh, of the manufactured pharmaceuticals for instance pdf is also um, beneficial for other customers P P the pdf file format is a little more uh, platform independent than uh, xlsx uh, pdf viewing is uh, is uh, available in uh, many uh, many modern web browsers for instance on many platforms so there might be other benefits uh, as well this conversion to pdf is done still without any dependencies or requirements to install third party software or any additional uh, any additional installs the conversion to pdf is available on enterprise central and enterprise server you might uh, might say that uh, we have built Excel right into our servers, and that's uh, that's uh, how we can uh, we can support when we convert the Excel files to PDF. Also, things like conditional formatting, as you can see here, I'm coloring the cells based on the values, the graphical elements like charts uh, here in this uh, this report. That's enabled through the functionality of Excel. But since we have built in kind of Excel in our servers, we can convert this to, uh, to PDF uh, while still maintaining uh, uh, much of the more advanced functionality that Excel gives for visualization like this. PDF, but we are taking it one step even further. Um, as part of the compliance pack, you get a couple of licenses. You get the change control license, you get the timescale connectivity, or the external log storage license for timescale, and you get a license for PDF signing. So here you specify you want, you want uh, the result converted to PDF. Next checkbox is, is for signing of the PDF. It's an option you can turn on that will apply a digital signature using a digital certificate to the PDF report that then can be used to validate that the content have not been altered or edited after the report was, uh, uh, was generated. And here's where you turn that feature on. And when, that's, when you generate a PDF with that turned on, might uh, look uh, look like this when you open it in, uh, for instance, Adobe Acrobat. Adobe Acrobat Reader have functionality to validate this uh, this signing. So in this version, I can open the signature pa uh, panel, and here you can you can see that that. The document has been signed, signed using a valid certificate that the document has not been modified, modified since it was certified. The signer's identity is valid, etc. That the signature is long-term validation enabled. So even th these kinds of certificates uh, are uh, typically expiring. Uh, in a, at, a, at an interval, this uh, LTV, long-term validation, means that it's possible to validate the integrity of uh, this document even after the certificate that was used when generating the report uh, has uh, expired. So extra, extra protection as part of the compliance pack. And those are the new features in 3.2 that uh, help customers in regulated uh, 
industries such as the pharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, for instance, or other critical in installations to better meet uh, the requirements that they are subject to. Thank you very much.